So there's a man named Steve, Steve Shire, um, who I, whom I've come to know very well over the years. And technically it was his wife who was my patient. This was when I was doing uh, hospital-based work, acute care hospital work. Um, this was years ago. And um, Steve's wife, Amy, uh, was dying of um, biliary tree cancer um, and was in the hospital, in our hospital, and died in the hospital. I, as part of the palliative care team, was called in to help tend to her comfort in the final days. I actually never met Amy in a conscious state. When I got to the bedside, she was al alive but unaware, as far as we could tell. Um, but I very at the same time met Steve, her doting husband. And as often happens in, in this work, the, the, your work, the, the patient, can often end up being the family member. And that's what happened here. So Steve was deep, deep in grief. You know, I mean, he, he loved Amy to the moon and back, and it showed. I mean, you could feel this man's pain down the hall. And, um, and you, as happens in this acute care setting, especially, it's particularly, it's a heck of a foil. You know, there's so much that's possible in a hospital. The impossible often is possible in a hospital. The tagline where I did my internship at the Medical College of Wisconsin was where miracles happen every day. I, I hated that tagline. It felt like way too much pressure. But the point is, you know, crazy things, I shouldn't say that, impos impossible sounding things in the hospital are possible. And so it's extra charge. I was watching Steve say, well, what about this? Why can't we do, you know, like, almost like an engineer's mind, like if we just get the math right, we'll have a different outcome, right? You know, that had always been the case with her illness to this moment, but this moment was different. There was nothing more we could do to save her life. And so I was working with Steve, coming to terms with all this, and watching him try to do this very quickly, because she was in a matter of hours to live. And he was really trying hard. And, he, you know, he wanted to find a kind of a worldview where he felt okay, but that worldview wasn't accessible yet. He felt just horrible, and there was no way through it. There was no explaining it away. So we just sat together. We just had to be together and just had to kind of wade through the emotions. And sometimes the trick for us in this world is to just not run away. There's so much we're not going to fix. But abandoning someone in those moments, that, that starts feeling almost like a sin. Um, so as it goes, Steve and I uh, stayed in touch through his grief. And what ended up happening with Steve, um, he did this very beautiful thing. I think for a lot of us, even the most horrible experiences in our lives, the most difficult, say, um, one of the ways to make meaning from them is to learn something from those experiences, to take something away, to be changed by the experience and to affect the future in a way that's like the legacy of the thing you lost. Like for, so for Steve, he, um, he came up with this, what they call this prognostic, this prognostication tool, um, and it's in our book, and we actually wrote an article recently about it, because when he was reflecting on how beautifully his wife Amy had handled the medical maze and her own death and preparing Steve for it, uh, he hit on this idea that Amy had wished to have her kind of hand on the spigot of information. She was interested to know her prognosis, she was interested to know all sorts of details, she was a very analytical person. But she was smart enough to know that some information was just going to bury her. It wasn't going to help her. It was just going to, it would flood her in a way that wasn't helpful. Um, and so she, she and Steve talked this out, and then Steve came up with this tool as a way to sort of uh, declare how you want to receive information. It was a beautiful notion. So Steve came up with this tool, and now we're trying to get it around the world, whereas as a patient, you can say to your doctor, hey, tell me everything there is to know. I want to know it all. Don't spare me any detail. Or you can say, hey, don't tell me anything. Tell my husband or tell, me so tell someone else. Um, or you can say, let's play it in the middle and over time, let's you know, tell me what I need to know now and answer my questions as we go kind of thing. And that tool has already helped a gazillion people and that's part of Steve, what Steve has honored in a Amy's memory. And it's a way he's made meaning from her death. And I look at him smile every time he talks about this thing. And what a beautiful uh, sort of alchemy he's done with his grief. And he's now helping a gazillion people with this thing.